Well, well, well. Uh, this is some interesting news that could make people a little worried about the Nintendo Switch. Because there is a current lawsuit that has been filed against Nintendo that has the potential to shut down the Nintendo Switch. I.e. Nintendo would no longer be allowed to sell the Nintendo Switch. This is big. <laughs> really big. Now, let's just, let's just hop into what's happening, okay? So, accessory maker Game Vice believes that Nintendo has violated a patent for concepts used in the wiki pad and i'll throw up some images of the wiki pad and some stuff here so you have an idea of of what the device was that came to market in the first place although this lawsuit isn't specifically over what came to market but over concepts that are in the patent that they never actually released themselves but it is patented and with it being patented that means that uh, nobody else can do anything like that anything close to the patent without obviously contacting the patent holder and getting permission, which usually includes a royalty fee. So here is what, it, this was reported by Engadget, by the way. Uh, so it says, the Nintendo Switch certainly isn't the first gaming tablet, but it's directly riffing on other ideas? Game device thinks so. The accessory maker is suing Nintendo for allegedly violating a patent for concepts used in the Wikipad, its gaming-oriented Android slate, as well as its namesake add-on controllers for phones and tablets. According to the suit, the Switch and its removable Joy-Con controllers are too close to Game Vice's vision of a combination of detachable game controller and a device with a flexible bridge section. Not surprisingly, the lawsuit calls for both damages and a ban on Switch sales. Uh, obviously, the Wikipad itself never really did great in sales and was later dropped for other add-ons for phones and tablets. And then it goes on to say, in some ways, the lawsuit is an epilogue to a long-running story. The Wikipad team started out with grand plans for tablet gaming in 2012, when it promised elaborate features as glasses, such as glasses-free 3D and game streaming. However, it didn't work out that way. Delays and a rethink prompted a change in design, and while the Wikipad did receive some acclaim, Game Vice eventually dropped it in favor of its add-ons for phones and tablets. Although Nintendo Switch clearly has some differences, it's intended more of as a hybrid TV and portable console. For one thing, it's effectively showing what could have been if the Wikipad itself had taken off. So... Uh, and, and we have the exact complaint, so the, the literal lawsuit papers, uh, I'll link that down in the description below, and the patent that they claim it violates. And there's some interesting things in this patent itself. So here's the summary of the patent. Uh, Nintendo has infringed on the claims of, of, one of, 119, uh, yeah, of 119 patent, specifically claim 1, and its pertinent subclaims. Here are the, the, here's the claims listed below. They violated a combination comprising a computing device the computing device providing a plural a plurality of sides each of the plurality of sides are disposed between an electronic display screen of the computing device and the back of a computing device a communicating port interacting with the computing device the communication port providing a communication link and a pair of confinement structures the pair of confinement structures adjacent to and confining the computing device on at least two opposing sides of plurality of sides of the computing device. I really don't like that word. An input device attached to and in electronic communication with the communication port. The input device providing a pair of controller mo modules. The pair of controller modules providing input module apertures. Each input module aperture secure secures an instructional input device, wherein said input module apertures are adjacent each of at least two opposing sides of plurality of sides of the computing device and wherein the input is a separate and distinct structure from the communication port, forming no structural portion of the communication port and a structural bridge securing the pair of confinement structures to one another in which each of the pair control modules provide an attachment structure cooperating with the communication port. Each attachment structure secures the input device to the communication port and in which the structural bridge comprising a conduit between the pair of controller modules and a fastening mechanism cooperating with the pair of confinement structures. The fastening mechanism secures the pair of confinement structures one to the other. This is really interesting in that Game Vice, uh, their patent 
is very, very specific. And it's so specific that how the Joy-Cons attach to the Nintendo Switch could potentially be deemed in violation of this patent. Now, because this patent never became an actual product, it's highly unlikely that Nintendo even knew this patent existed. So there, there's some benefit to the doubt to what Nintendo is making in that they couldn't have knowingly been in violation of this patent uh, because they probably didn't even know it existed, even if Nintendo might have took inspiration from Game Vice's original products, which is possible because Game Vice created uh, this slate thing that you slid your tablets into uh, that had controllers, and they eventually released uh, controllers that did attach directly to the side of phones and tablets. Uh, but obviously how it attached and the type of controllers it was is completely different uh, to how this one you know, how the Joy-Cons themselves attach. But again, this broadening patent here does kind of describe a little bit how the Joy-Cons themselves work, um, at least to the point where it's generalized enough where you could see how the Joy-Cons could fit into this patent. And that's obviously worrisome because uh, it's one thing when Joe Schmo, who claims they had the idea for motion controls, goes after Nintendo for the Wii mode. Uh, this is an accessory maker that has some money in the bank um, and has some clout legally, uh, at least attempting an idea somewhat similar, at least in concept, to what the Joy-Cons do. And it could be argued they have a legit case here. They potentially could win a lawsuit against Nintendo. Now, the problem, obviously, and, and the worry for us is that it, it could lead to the Joy-Cons no longer existing, and it could lead to the Switch itself getting shut down. Now, I... I don't know if a judge would say that the Switch itself would have to see sales. Uh, a judge could require a rapid redesign, which could include not having detachable Joy-Cons. Uh, if Nintendo would just release the system without detachable Joy-Cons, then that could be uh, something that is allowed, <laughs> uh, and Joy-Cons would could continue to be sold and allowed to exist as, say, individual Wiimote kind of things that can attached to a piece of plastic and let you still use it as a controller uh which would obviously still support switches that have already sold uh that's one solution the likely solution uh and this is what usually happens in cases like this when a company is trying to get a product completely shut down that is highly successful there's just a payout uh, and nintendo tries to settle it outside of court because the risk of going to court uh, and, and the risk of letting the judge decide is the judge could literally rule that, yeah, Nintendo completely violated the patent and they owe royalties on every system sold to that company and they can no longer sell that product, which would be devastating for Nintendo uh, considering how popular the product is and how a lot, there are some people out there that actually think the Switch is the future of gaming. Now, Nintendo does have going for it the fact that the Switch is a device that itself its selling point is being able to be portable and use on a home console, uh, whereas, you know, they're talking strictly about a tablet. And tablets can do that, but obviously if you're using the port on the tablet for these controllers, you're not, again, attaching it to a TV. So Nintendo has some, some benefits here, benefit of the doubt. Uh, Nintendo's best course of action, though, is to approach Game Vice and be like, look, we'll give you a settlement payment outside of court to drop the lawsuit. And I think that's the ultimate conclusion of this. But again, it is scary thinking that a company like Game Vice could potentially get the Switch shut down, uh, considering how much they kind of failed with their own concept of what the Switch ultimately became. And you could see how they might have an issue with this because they, they had this idea first, it looks like. And they blew it. And the Switch is essentially what their idea could have been if it was successful. So there could be some jealousy here. But again, it does look like they do have a little bit of a legal leg to stand on. And my concern level, you know, if I had to rate it out of 10, I'd say I'm probably about a 5 or a 6. Just because having read the actual complaint and thinking about how the Switch itself works and how the control modules work, and how it connects, and the rails and everything, uh, and how this patent is described, I can see uh, where there th there could be some infringement here. Uh, probably unknowingly, but yeah, it's 
it, it is of concern. Now, Nintendo gets lawsuits against them all the time, but as I said, just like when the Wiimote was sued, uh, generally, it's not a concern. Uh, Nintendo will settle, or they're, they're just outright going to win the, the case because they know their technology is not the same as the one being sued about. But this isn't even being sued about a technology. This is a lawsuit about an idea, right? It, it's not about, you. oh, well, the joy comes up IR sensors and all the stuff that wasn't in, in the original Game Boy stuff. That's irrelevant. Because Nintendo is just just dealing with the concept of the Joy-Cons themselves and that being patented by Game Vice. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Again, I think the most likely conclusion is that Nintendo settles out of court and just pays a fee. Uh, you know, it'll probably be a significant fee. It could even be several million dollars for all we know. Uh, or, but again, you know, it, it also depends how badly is Game Vice pursuing this. You know, is this something where they're hoping for a settlement? Maybe they just want a payment. Or are they legit trying to get the Switch shut down pissed that Nintendo did their concept better and uh, just wanting oodles and oodles of money? Maybe they value the, the 4.7 million or so Switches that have sold. Maybe there's an evaluation on the profits from that where they could be saying, look, no amount of settlement you pay us outside of court. Uh, can make up the damages that you're doing to us as a patent holder. I, I don't know. I don't know how aggressively it's being pursued here, but um, we do know that they're obviously not happy that Nintendo has taken a concept that they seem to have originated and done it 10 times better, but uh, and, and with a lot more success, which shouldn't be a surprise. Uh, Nintendo's a pretty big brand. Game Vice itself is selling an accessory. But uh, it's very interesting... I'm hoping that uh, either the courts decide that there's enough differences since the Switch's main selling point is not the detachable controllers. Uh, but this could present a problem for Nintendo. I ultimately think they're going to try to settle it outside of court. And I guess we'll see if Game Vice is just looking for that payout or if they legit are trying to be revengeful here uh, where they're pissed. And they don't care about the money. They care about getting the product shut down because... Uh, you know, now that they see its success, they think they can bring the product back uh, in their own version. Maybe even with a Tech or X1 in, in, in a tablet or something. I have no idea. Uh, I don't know what the company's seeking. You don't know what the company's seeking, but this is a worrisome thing. And uh, yeah, as I said, I'm, I'm about a 6 out of 10 unless we hear uh, that this is going to full trial. Uh, then my worry goes up even more because at that point, we don't know what a jury or a judge is going to think in that case, and how they're going to rule. They're, they're, Nintendo loses all control of the outcome if this goes to trial. So, yeah. And I'm sure Game Vice will have a pretty decent lawyer. I mean, they, they, they are an active company that does make money selling accessories for phones. Um, they, they probably have enough money to put a decent lawyer out there and argue pretty well. Anyways... I'm Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more. And as always, folks, I will catch you in the next one.